the vital cancer vaccines or uh, they are basically hpv vaccines because hpv is the primary causal factor for cervical cancer so there are a few types one is the bivalent type which gives protection against two types of hpv then there is a quadrivalent type which gives protection against four types and also there is a nanovalent type which gives protection against nine types of hpv and when we talk of these types they are basically the high risk types the commonest being 16 18 and the nine has the other high risk types also of the vaccine it is usually given in the muscle of the deltoid region of the upper arm that that is where it is administered and after administration it is good to be lying down or sitting for at least 15 to 30 minutes to prevent any of the immediate reactions which occur and these reactions occur to any vaccine So the recommended age is from nine years to twenty-six years, and uh, now the nonovalent vaccine can also be given up to forty-five years. But the age that uh, where the vaccine is most efficacious is before the onset of sexual debut. So nine to twenty-six years is the preferred age group. The immediate side effects are the same as with any vaccine, any viral vaccine. They can be pain at the site of the injection, uh, some kind of a mild rash, sometimes a little bit of fever or headaches also, and uh, sometimes, as was seen in young girls, what we call as vasovagal syncope can happen after the vaccine. So in that, that is the reason that it is recommended to lie down for at least half an hour after the vaccine. So any of these immediate side effects can be monitored for. Vasovagal is basically uh, when you are sitting and you stand up, you suddenly feel dizzy and you feel that you are going to faint. So that is what we call in med and the heart rate becomes slow at that point. And so that is what we call a vasovagal syncope. It is not a life-threatening condition, but it is a condition which can incapacitate a person suddenly. main authority for any licensing of any new drug product or vaccine is the drug controller general of india so they hold the uh, the the authority to permit or not to permit vaccines uh, the dcgi has approved an indigenous vaccine which has been made by the serum institute of india along with the dbt uh, in july this year in july of 2022 and uh, the vaccines which were already available in india which are being imported from outside which are the gardasil and the cervirex by merck and uh, gsk those are the two companies they also have their marketing approvals from the dgci and uh, as far as uh, who is which is the authority which promotes the vaccines since the age bracket that this vaccine is recommended is 9 to 26 uh, the indian academy of pediatrics is the is the authority uh, which will has which will have the final word to say on this that uh, uh, should this vaccine be in the national program as of now it is an optional vaccine it it comes under category 2 of iap vaccines which means a person can opt to receive it uh, it is not so far not being mandated by the government but if somebody wishes to go ahead with the vaccine they are most welcome to do so yes in the ideal scenario it is a childhood vaccine which is not gender discriminant it is to be given to boys and girls but in countries like india where the resources are limited and you only have a certain number of vaccines uh, it is thought better as a priority to vaccinate girls because the cancers which occur in women other than cervical the vulval and vaginal cancers can be quite severe and some of them are not amenable to screening in other countries like in australia in europe and in uk this vaccine is being used both for boys and girls because they don't have any resource limitation about pregnancy pregnancy per se is not a contraindication to the vaccine but then uh, the corollary of that is that we don't vaccinate in pregnancy so if somebody knows they are pregnant then the vaccine is deferred to the postpartum period but if somebody say receives the vaccine today and a few weeks later she finds out that she is pregnant then that pregnancy is not at risk just because of the vaccine so one does not need to go ahead and get an abortion done just because they had received the vaccine
There is only one contraindication to the vaccine because the vaccine is developed in a yeast cell line. So somebody who has a hypersensitivity to yeast, uh, they cannot receive the vaccine and also if they have a latex hypersensitivity because those are the two, the two vaccines are developed using those cell lines. Other than that, women with comorbidities can receive the vaccine. There is no contraindication. There is no case scenario like this. Even those who are immunocompromised, in fact, it is recommended to vaccinate them earlier rather than later because they are at higher risk to acquire HPV and they are also at a lower risk to clear it on their own because their own immunity is low. So uh, for this bracket, in fact, three doses are recommended as early as possible. The real scenario is if you are going ahead uh, with a quadrivalent vaccine, then the first dose is given, that is called as the zero dose. Then after two months of that dose, the second dose is given. And after four months of that or six months from the first dose, the third dose is given. This is the recommendation for those who are between the ages of 15 and 26. The WHO recommends that for girls between the age of 9 to 15, even two doses of vaccine given six months apart are equally efficacious. And in April of 2022, there was a single dose vaccine consortium which is by uh, the top uh, the leading agencies across the world who are studying this data to show that even a single dose of vaccine given in this age group is as efficacious as two or three doses so this will bring down the cost also significantly one of the things which is not recommended before the vaccine is to do an hpv test it is not that if you have a negative HPV test, you should take the vaccine and if you have HPV positive, you should not take the vaccine. Because uh, there are 200 types of HPV. The vaccine prevents against the common cancer causing ones. Even if somebody has HPV of one type, they are still protected by the vaccine from acquiring HPV of the other type. So there, are there And there is also cross protection. So uh, even if when somebody has cervical cancer, that means the HPV has been present in their body for the last 10 or 20 years. Yes, in that subset, it doesn't make sense to vaccinate because the HPV has led to its end effect, which is cancer. But in other people who don't have cancer who, or who are in the normal screening program should go ahead and take the vaccine. They don't need to get a negative HPV test before taking the vaccine. So one of the myths that is associated with the vaccine is that say if somebody misses a dose, so if the dose schedule is 0, 1 and 6 or 0, 2 and 6 and one of the doses is missed, for example the third dose is missed, then uh, should we restart the schedule, uh, does the whole vaccination schedule have to be done again? It does not have to be done again. Even if uh, someone has missed a dose, they just can take the missed dose and that completes the schedule. One more myth is that if we have been vaccinated by a bivalent vaccine earlier and now the nonavalent is available, is it better and should we be revaccinated? Again, there is no data to say that if somebody has been vaccinated with one set of vaccine, with the newer advances in the market, they have to be vaccinated with the newer ones. Someone who has never acquired HPV infection, the efficacy is 95, more than 95% in HPV naive population. In the population that has acquired one or the other form of HPV, the vaccine efficacy dips down significantly to about 40 to 50 percent, but still a 40 to 50 percent protection is still better than no protection. So that is why the vaccine should be recommended irrespective of HPV status. For all cancers, prevention is better than cure. Uh, HPV vaccination is one of the primary pillars of prevention for this cancer and so if anyone has any concerns they should discuss with their doctor if they have any uh, thoughts as to why they should or should not be receiving the vaccine. It is always good to consult the doctor and have the appropriate advice going forward.